In this video, a variable frequency oscillator for shortwave that can generate frequencies between 3 and 7.8 MHz. And the whole um, thing is developed for slurk tuning. In that case we move in into the coil the ferrite rod and then the frequency changes. Of course um, because the inductance changes due to that ferrite rod. And here is the schematic the circuit in real. Spent approximately two days to develop it anyway. The coil is here that's perhaps interesting to show and the properties of the coil are that the metal wire inside is one millimeter and with the plastic around it it is two millimeters and the amount of windings is say five or seven that depends a little bit anyway Five is a good uh, value. Of course, uh, with slurk tuning, we move in that rod in and out. Let's see what happens. Now we are on 5.1 megahertz, and I take out that rod. Frequency goes up, of course. Now it's completely out. And it oscillates on 9.3 megahertz. And uh, it was not made for 9.3 megahertz. Anyway, it worked that way when I made it in a definite way. But it was really developed for a somewhat lower frequency, say maximum uh, 7.6 or so megahertz. And that's also where it works at its best. You can see that the waveform changes somewhat. It's not very pure here. Here we see a kind of strange effect. And that was the problem during my first experiments. I want to tell something more about it. This is a very good waveform on 5.1. And of course, when we close this switch, this one here, we add 960 picofarad as a parallel capacitor to that coil. And that means, of course, that the frequency goes down very, very substantially. Hooked up now a crocodile clip, connected now to the ground. Let's see what happens. Now we are on 5 megahertz and now we are on 2.9 megahertz and we have a good waveform. want to tell something more about that anyway. Take out that ferrite rod and now we are on 5.0 megahertz. The idea was to avoid the so-called uh, variable capacitor, the tuning capacitor, because they are sometimes not very easy to find anyway. I want to show my first experiments. Uh, this was a first experiment. It oscillated on 2.1 and of course we can see that this is not a very pure sine wave. Looks a kind of sawtooth wave, has often to do with too much amplification. Now we are on 3.7 megahertz, also with a bad waveform. And it was repaired, that bad waveform, with these two anti-parallel diodes parallel to the tuning coil that repaired the whole. A uh, bad waveform gave it a good sine wave, and also here, this is important this tiny capacitor of 27 picofarad was more or less the final 
um, waveform correction when everything was made in a definite way like it's now here let's go to a other experiment this is the first experiment and I've showed it by purpose because of um, the problem that you always hear keep your wiring short well don't let your electronics career be ruined by the idea that everything every wiring has to be short this works on say 3 megahertz or so and you can see all these wiring hanging around no problems at all only problem is that when you make it in a more definite way the frequency goes up somewhat but you can do all these tests with kind of sloppy wiring no problem here again second coil that I tested I was uh, working in the right direction here again this sloppy wiring it gave a good sine wave and here the final experimental coil like I show it have showed it uh, now first head up this was all uh, two less space so I had to change it the final VFO coil and here the first setup a drawing piece of wood I always work with that piece of wood and brass nails here again the circuit and here is what I have showed and here a detailed but that's of course here this is uh, much better visible and here you see that tiny capacitor of 27 picofarad that made a definite uh, correction to the waveform so there's not so much more to tell this was all this is by the way the drawing how I made it in real and when you are on YouTube set your YouTube to 1020 pixels to get a good reading of this schematic of this drawing the front switch with that front switch you switch on that 960 picofarad capacitor that makes that the frequency drops to a low value I have searched by purpose the lowest value 3 megahertz uh, because perhaps it's possible to receive radio amateurs on 3.5 megahertz or 7.5 or so and of course there are many um, broadcasting stations in this range wish you luck